Hi everyone, happy Monday. I know that all the days lately have seemed like they're just running together, um, but it is Monday, and yesterday was Sunday, even though maybe they feel like the same. <laughs> um, I hope that some of the liturgical seasons can kind of help bring some variety into our very similar day-to-day -day life right now. Uh, so, for example, yesterday was Divine Mercy Sunday, and that's where we celebrate uh, Jesus' divine mercy and love for all of us. Um, and it is also our topic for today's video. We're going to learn how to pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet. So, before I kind of dive into that, I wanted to talk about a very special saint that brought a lot of Jesus' love and divine mercy kind of into the spotlight through her diary. Um, and this saint is named St. Maria Faustina Kalowska. I don't really know if I'm pronouncing that right. It's a Polish name. I know my last name is Polish, but I married into it, so can't call me on it. I'm actually Irish Italian, so. All right, uh, <laughs> so St. Maria Faustina was a Polish girl. She grew up in a poor family and she wasn't formally educated. So while you may have go to school every day and learn to read, write, math, everything, uh, she didn't really have that opportunity. She did know how to read and write, but it wasn't a lot. So it's actually kind of surprising that someone from this background ended up writing so much. Um, and there is even talk of making her a doctor of the church, which is pretty cool. Um, and so, anyways, <laughs> St. Faustina, she came from this poor family in Poland, and she decided to enter the convent um, when she was older, and she entered the, um, the Sisters of Our Lady of Mercy. So, you know, she already had a passion for Christ's mercy in the beginning, and then while she was growing spiritually as a sister, in the, um, and which is another word for nun, uh, she started to have visions and started to have um, these experiences with Jesus himself, uh, which is crazy for us to think about. And not a lot of people knew about it. In fact, I think it was only her mentor that knew that she was having these visions, and she was kind of confused about it too. So what her mentor did was he told her, hey, write this down. And that's where we got her diary from. She wrote 600 pages of Christ's messages and they're all um, compatible with what we have learned from the gospel about God's mercy and love. So I want to talk a little bit about what that message was that she wrote 600 pages about. Um, so it was about God's mercy, obviously. Um, so we talk about this, we can talk about this in a really simple way, um, kind of bringing it down to a really easy level to learn about what God's mercy is, his divine mercy is for us. So first of all, what is it? The whole entire message is really just this simple. It is that God loves us all. God loves me. He loves you. He loves your family. He loves your friends. And he will love everybody that is going to come into this world and everyone that has already left this world. Um, so God's love is infinite and it is for everyone. We can see how much he loves us by sending his son here who, to, who lived and died and rose from the dead for us. That's, in, that's huge. It's incredible. Okay, so basic message. Divine mercy means that God loves us all. Now, I'm going to give you a really easy ABC kind of look at God's mercy. <laughs> so, uh, so it's literally just that ABC. It's really easy. So A stands for to ask for God's mercy. So all we need to do is ask God for it. Be like, you know, hey, Jesus, I ask for your mercy. And then B is for God. Be merciful. So be perfect as such as our Heavenly Father is perfect. We try to be merciful ourselves. So if someone has done us wrong or 
if um, you know you get into a fight with somebody and everything and you can reconcile forgive them you know have mercy on those who do not have a like a lot or you know who struggle with things be merciful and then C completely trust Jesus with our whole hearts our whole lives just trust Jesus so we have those three little simple steps, A, B, C. Ask for mercy, be merciful, and completely trust Jesus. Really, really simple, right? Okay, so I wanted to talk a little bit more about specifically what divine mercy means in the tradition of our church. Um, so one of the things, and I think as somebody who likes to paint and draw, um, that this is a really cool story is that Jesus also asked Saint Faustina to paint an image of him. Now Saint Faustina was like I'm not really an artist so she actually had somebody else do it for her. She said, so I have this particular card uh, to show you. So this is the image and let's see I want to make sure it focuses correctly. So it has Jesus in a white garment, and he has rays of white and red coming from his heart. And it says on the bottom, Jesus, I trust in you. And that is the format that Jesus had instructed St. Faustina to paint the image in. Um, and famously, one of the things that she said was, it's not as beautiful as you. It's not good enough, right? And... I just find that so, <laughs> so human of us to be like, oh, the picture doesn't match what we know your beauty to be like. But one of the things that Jesus had said to St. Faustino is, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What matters is the message behind the image. And the message behind the image is mostly this blood and water image that comes from his heart. So the white and the red lights that come um, from his heart. So the white and the red symbolize water and blood. And water and blood mean a lot in our faith, right? And this particularly comes from um, when Jesus was dying on the cross, uh, they wanted to make sure that he had died. So someone used a spear um, to pierce his side, and from his side came flowing blood and water. The, the water symbolizes like a rebirth and the blood symbolizes purifying um, and so that also reminds us of two certain sacraments um, I'll give you a second to kind of guess what those two sacraments mean that you might see water in and then another that you might see blood in if you guessed baptism and the Eucharist you are right! You won! Ta-da! Okay, <laughs> so uh, baptism, we use water to, um, to symbolize our new life in Christ. And in the Eucharist, we consume his body, blood, soul, and divinity, his totality in the Eucharist, in the, um, in the, in the host and the chalice, which become his body and blood. So it's really cool that it symbolizes those sacraments as well. Um, and then the, the signature on the bottom, Jesus, I trust in you, that comes from our ABC, right? And then in um, the last one, C, completely trust Jesus. And that's what was in his message, completely trust him. Okay, so as promised, I'm going to teach you how to pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet. Um, if you don't know what it is, which is totally okay, I didn't learn this until... I was maybe in high school. Um, I, my family didn't pray it a lot, so it was very unfamiliar for me to me for a long time. So um, if you're unfamiliar with it, that's okay. Um, I'm gonna introduce you to a couple of the prayers, which might not be something you're familiar with because uh, they are new, but they are really short and really easy to say. So I, I hope that helps. Okay, so. The prayers for this chaplet are really pretty simple. I think the longest ones are the optional opening and closing prayers. So I'm going to start with one of those. Um, so the opening prayer goes like this. 
You expired Jesus, but the source of life gushed forth for souls, and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O font of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. Then you repeat three times. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. So, again, the whole message of mercy. Now, this next one, um, it's called the Eternal Father, and it goes like this. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. Which I think such a beautiful prayer, um, offering the totality of Jesus for everybody in the whole world, for you, for me, for everyone. Um, and this is exactly what this chaplet is about, offering prayers for the whole world, as well as ourselves. So uh, this is the really shortest prayer um, in the chaplet. And it said the most. Um, so it goes like this. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. And there is uh, one of the ending prayers is called Holy God. And this is usually repeated three times at the end of the chaplet or towards the end. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. So the first part of it is all about praising God um, as holy, um, mighty, and immortal. And so I, I think that kind of portrays an image that we want to trust in, someone who is mighty and immortal and who will always love us in His holiness. And so here is the other optional prayer. It's an optional closing prayer. And it goes like this. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Amen. So I don't really expect everybody to kind of just catch on from just watching the video. There will be links um, in the, our resource list that show you where these prayers are and how to learn them. Um, because if you're like me, I'm visual, I got to see the words in order to learn how to pray them. Okay. And so now I just kind of want to go through uh, the basics of how to pray it. Okay. So like the rosary, in fact, exactly like the rosary, we use uh, a string of beads. So um, you can act, you do actually use the rosary to pray this chaplet, which is really cool. Um, it's like a two-in-one. I'm all about them two-in-ones. Um, and it's a lot shorter than the rosary. I, I had a friend who once called it the mini rosary. <laughs> um, and it's, it's really simple. So it starts out like all prayers do with the sign of the cross, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Um, and the first bead is the Our Father. And we have, I just want to make sure I'm telling you the right word. <laughs> so I'll be following along on my phone here. So first we have the Our Father, uh, the Hail Mary, Apostles' Creed. So these three beads, Our Father, Hail Mary, Apostles' Creed. Um, and then we start with the Eternal Father, um, which, which we, as we said before, is Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, for an atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. And then we just go right ahead and say 10 for the sake of his sorrowful passions. So this is really simple and really easy. You just go for the sake of sorrowful passion. Let me just make sure I'm saying it right. Uh, okay. So it's really easy. <laughs> the next 10 beats you just say, 10 um, of those really short prayers that start with for the sake of sorrow and passion. And it goes, 
For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. And you repeat that for the ten beads. And what's really cool is that this can be a group prayer. It's especially really great for families. Um, if you have a leader, um, say one family member starts with the first uh, decade and they can lead it by starting the first half of each prayer and uh, it is followed by everybody else finishing together. So for example, um, for the first prayer, um, Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Then everybody would come in um, after the leader says that and say, together in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. And for the shorter prayers, uh, the first half done by the leader is for the sake of his sorrowful passion. And then everybody comes to say, together and say, says, have mercy on us and on the whole world. And so you can switch off leaders every decade. You could have one leader for the whole thing, or you could say it all together. Um, one of the reasons that we have uh, this kind of two-way sort of group prayer is that it is a way to kind of have some rhythm and movement in the prayer itself as we um, as we pray to God. It's kind of like music sometimes, which can be really pretty. And there is a song variation of the Divine Mercy Chaplet. I'll see if I can find a video to kind of link it. It's very, very beautiful. Um, so you do uh, the repetition of those 10 decades all the way around, just like in, oh, sorry, five decades, just like when we do the rosary. Um, and we close with that short prayer of Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole, whole world. And you repeat that one three times. There's a lot of repetition in this one. Um, and then you can come to the closing prayer. Um, and the, when, if you were also to do the optional, um, opening prayer, that would come, um, at the beginning before you start the decades. And that's about it. So I, I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned a little bit about how to pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet. I really encourage you to pray with your families, especially during this time, especially when every day seems like the same. Um, I don't know what day it is half the time, so, you know, we're all in the same boat here. Um, and yeah, just like offer up your prayers at the end of the day for the, the whole world, right? Um, as we pray for an end to this pandemic. I'd also like to invite you to our YouTube page. Uh, Father Rich has actually done a whole novena, um, uh, if you've been following along, since Good Friday. Um, and then all the way up to Divine Mercy Sunday. It's called the Divine Mercy Novena. Uh, novena is a special word that is basically just means nine. So nine days of prayer. Um, and he has been doing this nine day Novena of the Divine Mercy, praying the Divine Mercy Chaplet every day. And he filmed the conclusion of it for yesterday. So I believe it's on our YouTube page now if you wanna go check it out and pray with Father Rich. Um, and yeah, um, I'll link some resources below to, um, uh, related to our topic and I, I hope you enjoy. Great. Have a great day.